In this video, I'm going to write a square root function from scratch. Now, that's not particularly useful because MATLAB provides a square root function for us to use. It is abbreviated SQRT, but I think this will serve as both a good review of how to create our own function files and also provide some insights into how a square root is calculated. I'm going to start off with a new script in the upper left corner here, and I'm going to type out my formatting. And when developing a larger function, I think it's not a bad idea to start your code off in just a simple script, get it working before you move it over into a function itself, into a separate function file, so that you can work out all the bugs in your, your test script that's right in front of you. So I'm going to begin to write the code. Let's try to find the square root of something that I know, for starters. So I know the square root of 144, it is 12. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to identify the perfect squares just below and just above our target. This is going to give us a starting place for identifying the square root. Now it's a little bit silly for a square root that is a perfect square, such as 144, but you'll see why it's beneficial uh, later on. So let's name my variable lower bound, and I'm going to start it at 1. And then while my lower bound squared, is less than my target value, x. In fact, let's rename that variable to be target. I'm gonna keep increasing the lower bound. So when all this is finished, I'm gonna expect my lower bound to be uh, a value that when you square it, it is either greater than, or in this case, equal to my target. So to make sure my lower bound is actually the number below my target, so that when I square it, it's less than, I'm gonna subtract one from my lower bound. And let's display it out and make sure that works. I like to do this testing before I put my code into a function where it's going to be more complicated. All right, 11. That's perfect. Now, we kind of already actually had the correct answer and then we moved away from it. So we could add in a little test here such that if we actually have a perfect square, we just finish at that point. So that might be something like... And in my final draft, when I actually put this code into the function, I'm going to be returning the calculated result as my square root. But here I'm just going to display it out, so I should get 12, which is in fact the correct square root. But if I put in some number that's not a perfect square, like 55, what I'm going to get is nothing. Or if I just display lower bound, I'm going to get the value that, when squared, is close but lower than my target value. So if that's the case, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the lower bound, and I'm going to set it equal to, or actually I'm going to create a new variable is what I'm going to do. And my new variable, I don't have a great name for the variable. I'm going to call it my guess or my estimate. Estimate's a good name. It's my estimate of the square root. And I'm going to make it lower bound plus a half. Why a half? Well, because I know that the lower bound when squared is less than my target. And lower bound plus one when squared is greater than or equal to my target. And now that I have this if here, I know that it's actually strictly greater than my target. So I'm just going to try and get close. So let's see how it does with uh, the target that I have of 55. All right, 7.5. And another check we can do is, well, what is 7.5 squared? Hey, that's not bad. That's actually pretty close to 55. I mean, yeah, we would like it to be better, but it's, it's not so far off. Now let, let me take this back to 144 just for now. Okay, so I've got my estimate. Now I would like it to be a lot closer to the actual target value when I square it, so a lot closer to the square root. Maybe I should just have a variable that I can use to tune how close I want to get. I'm going to call it the margin. So this is kind of like my margin of error, how far away I'm allowed to be. I'm going to make it 0 0.000, maybe another 0, and then a 1. And then while the absolute value of the difference between my estimate squared and the target while that value is greater than the margin, I'm going to try and get closer. And then hopefully when I'm finished with that loop, I'm close enough. I'll display out my estimate, and hopefully it will be very close to the square root of my target. And in fact, a good comparison, I mean, you wouldn't always have this available in other circumstances, but since there is a built-in square root function, we might as well check and see uh, if our square root is close to what MATLAB considers the square root to be. And here's the real magic that lets us hone in on and get close to a square root. What we do is we set the estimate equal to the average of the estimate and the target divided by the estimate. 
and I get the average there by dividing them by two. So I add the estimate and the target divided by estimate together, and then I divide by two, which is the average of those two values. Now, why in the world would that seem like a good idea? Well, because if estimate is exactly the square root, then target divided by estimate is estimate. So we'd still get estimate. We wouldn't change this at all because it'd be estimate plus estimate divided by two. Now, what if estimate is too low? It's below the actual square root. Well, then target divided by estimate is too large. It's going to modify our current estimate to make it bigger, which will be more accurate. But we don't want to take too big of a leap in that bigger direction, so that's why we just average our current value and target divided by estimate. But the opposite is also true. When our estimate is too large, it's bigger than the actual square root, well then target divided by estimate is going to be smaller than our current estimate. So when we average that in with the current estimate, we will get a smaller value, which will be closer to the true square root. And I think that may be it actually. So let's let's go ahead and run this and see how well it works. Well, hey, 12, 12, and 12. That's because I displayed the 12 out here as well. Uh, in the function, we're gonna do that slightly differently. But what about something harder? What about 55? Hey, not bad, check that out. It looks like we nailed it. Now we should probably do some more thorough testing. And one thing that I know we can do is, instead of format short G, how about just format long? And now if you look carefully here, you'll see when we get to this digit, we're actually not as close as the square root function gets, but we could use our margin right here to improve our accuracy. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna worry about moving this code that I've written into a user-defined function and how we do that. So I'm gonna create a new tab over here. I'm gonna start with the word function. There's going to be a returned result value uh, I'm just going to name that y and then set this equal to the name of my function. I'm just going to write out square root. I don't want to use sqrt since that's already the built-in one. And then we need a variable to hold the input that we're sending to our function. I'm just going to name it x and I'll put end right there. And now we got to figure out what code to fill in. But we kind of already wrote that code. So let's go see how we can make this code work. I'm going to go ahead and copy this all over. And then I'm gonna highlight all of it and use tab to indent. I just hit the tab button after I highlighted it and it just indents all that code. Now I realize I don't actually wanna use X and Y because target is my input variable. That's what I'm trying to get the square root of. And for Y, I want estimate. It would be great to include some comments in here. So first off, we should describe what the function does, but then each section of code should also be commented. So this section right here is trying to determine what is a number that's the lower bound for the square root. So this next section, well, what is this if statement doing? It's identifying perfect squares and just stopping and returning right there if they are found. Now I do need to change this line. I don't wanna just display the lower bound. I want that to be my final result. So I'm gonna set estimate equal to this lower bound minus one. And then I'm going to use the keyword return to say, okay, I'm finished don't run any further code. That's what the return is going to do in MATLAB. It kind of has a little bit of a different effect in other languages. It's more involved with actually sending that result value back from the function. But in MATLAB, it's almost like the break that we use in loops to stop a loop. It's just going to stop the function and we're going to be finished at that point, which is what we want if we've identified a perfect square here. Now this, what is this doing? Well, this is going to increase our accuracy until it's within margin right here, and then quit and say we're finished. And instead of displaying, what we're gonna do here is nothing, because actually our result is already in the estimate variable. And that's it, I believe that is our function. This code is available on my Google Drive, now, it's a different version because I did do this off the top of my head, but it performs the same tasks. I actually don't have this if statement uploaded. So anyway, this code is available. Uh, there'll be a link in this video description. You can go check that out if you like. All of the code that I am showing you in this video works perfectly in Octave, just as it does in MATLAB. But let's actually finally wrap this up. So we need to save our function. I'm gonna use Control S, or you could click on the save icon here. MATLAB will suggest the correct file name. You've got to have your file names for functions match the name of the function itself. 
All right, so I saved it. And then uh, over here, I don't, I don't need all of this code. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of most of it. Uh, I will be displaying out my square root in comparison with the built-in square root function. So my square root of target right here. We already tried it with 55. Let's just run it again. Okay, I just did, can't even tell the difference. That's good. We want to be able to transplant that code from this file into the square root function that we just wrote. Uh, and you can try you know, a variety of other things. Nine, okay, it should be three. Great, that one's easy. 100, that one's easy. I don't know, let's just mash the keyboard, 384. Cool, our code does differ from the square root function. It has better accuracy. You can see they differ, I believe, in this digit is the first one in which they differ. But still, we're getting pretty good accuracy and we could improve it simply by changing this number right here if we wanted to. But I'm gonna leave that in for now. I don't want to run too long, and I don't know if there's other optimizations in the square root function that I don't have in my code. That's very, very possible. Um, this is, I don't know, a somewhat informed, but still not professional uh, writing of the square root function. Okay, and that's all for this video.